This video starts the discussion on part B of our topic 4. You can download the slides on iLearn. This video will be following our lecture slides closely but with some minor adjustment. We have discussed parsing problem in the previous video. To recap, it is a problem where given a grammar and input string, the algorithm needs to decide first if the string belongs in the language of the grammar and second, determine the structure of the input string. There are two types of parsing algorithm, top-down and bottom-up. Throughout topic 4, we will be discussing top-down parsing. Top-down parsing algorithm is the application of grammar rules in a top-to-down direction in the derivation tree. So, for example, if you have this string, in order for us to draw the derivation tree, we're going to start with a static non-terminal and we're going to draw from top to down. So, if you look at this example, at the first level of the derivation tree, it is applying the first rule up until all the input has been drawn and it shows that the implementation here is from the higher up the hierarchy of the tree up until the down or the lower level of the tree a top to down direction top down parsing is applied in this manner First, we will start with a starting non-terminal and then we decide which rule of the grammar should be applied by examining the input symbol and comparing it with the first symbol on the right-hand side of the rules. So, for example, if you want to write the leftmost derivation of this input string, we're going to start with the first input, which is A. To do that, we start with the starting non-terminal and then in our effort to write A, we need to look at grammar 8. So there are two rules derived from non-terminal S which is rule 1 and rule 2. And when we are looking at the right hand side of the grammar, we will notice that rule 1 starts with A and we are trying to write A. Therefore, we will apply rule 1 over here. So A as B. So we have uh, drawn A, so this is done, and moving on, we want to write B by replacing S. So looking back again at our grammar 8, and the two rules derived from S is rule 1 and rule 2. Rule 2 is the one that starts with B. Therefore, here we will apply rule 2. So, it's going to be A B A C B. So, S here has been replaced with rule 2. Okay, next, we are done with the first B and we move to the second B and we need to replace the non-terminal A with B. So, looking at our grammar, we have two rules derived from A, rule 3 and rule 4, and we are trying to write B. Therefore, we need to choose the rule that has B on the right-hand side, that starts with B on the right-hand side, and that rule is rule 3. So, it's going to be A, B, B, S, C, B. Okay, so in our input now, we are done with the second B and we move to the third B. And we need to replace S here with rule that has B on 
the right hand side or that starts with B on the right hand side. So if we look again at gra our grammar 8, the two rules that derive from S are rule 1 and rule 2 and the one that has B as the first symbol is rule number 2. So we will be applying rule number 2 by replacing S here and it's going to be A, B, B. B, A, C, C, B. Okay. Now, we have drawn the third B. And we need to write A by replacing capital A over here, non-terminal A. So, look at rule 3 and 4 that is that are derived from A and choose the one that has A. On the right hand side and that rule is rule 4 so when we apply it's going to be a b b b a c c b and our input string now no longer has any non-terminal inside of it and it is exactly our input string here so this is how we apply top-down parsing algorithm. A parser that is capable of implementing top-down algorithm can be automated. This process requires the understanding on mathematical theories involving sets and relations. Relation can be defined as a set of ordered pairs where each pair may be listed in parentheses and separated by comma. For example, these are example of ordered pairs. An operation we can perform on relation is reflexive transitive closure. So if R is a relation, the results of a reflexive transitive closure operation on R is designated as R star. There are three properties of R star. The first one is all pairs of R will be in R star. The second one is if we have these two ordered pairs, A, B and B, C, therefore A, C will be in R star. And the third property is if A is in one of the pairs in R, then A, A will be in R star. So the second property is called the transitive property and the third property is called the reflexive property. Okay, let's try to do a reflexive transitive closure operation on R1. So R1 has five pairs. The first property is Everything that is inside R1 must be in R1 star. Therefore, we just simply copy all these five pairs here and we label it as from R1. Okay, the second property is the transitive property where we are looking at connection. So, here, because we have A, B, and then we have B, C, therefore we will have A, C. Next, because we have B, C, and then we have C, D, we will have B, D. And finally, because here we have is and because here we have AC and then we also have CD we will also have AD so write uh, all all the transitive property that we can derive and label it as transitive and finally for each symbols inside R1, it must have 
its own reflection. So because we have A, we have AA. Because we have B, we have BB. We have C, but CC is already here and you do not need to write it again. And then we have T, therefore we have DD. Label it as reflexive property. So this is the result of the reflexive transitive closure of R1 designated as R1 star.